Hello, it's my privilege as always to meet with you and for us to study together from God's Word. And today, I would like for us to study from John chapter 13. John chapter 13, and our text will be verse 17. And I've entitled our study today, Happiness, Happiness. And these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ here in John chapter 13 and verse 17, when He said, If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Now, it's interesting that this is the only time in the King James translation of the Scripture where this particular word is translated happy when the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking. Most often, this same word is translated blessed. You know all of the Beatitudes, blessed. They all begin with that same word. Well, it's this same word that is here translated happy. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Now, I'm going to take some liberty today with this word know. When the Lord Jesus Christ said, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. I'm going to take some liberty with this word know. And I do so that I might point out to us six things in this passage, beginning with verse 1 and leading down to our text. John chapter 13 and verse 1. I want to point out six things to us that we know, six things that we should know, and knowing these things, if we follow the the example that the Lord Jesus Christ gives us here, then we, too, will be happy. We will know that happiness that the Lord Jesus Christ gives, that blessedness that is the, the... right of every child of God. First of all, in verse 1, verse 1, we know, we may know, that Christ loves His own which are in the world. Will you look here at verse number 1 of John 13? Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that His hour was come, that He should depart out of this world unto His Father, Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. So the first thing I want to emphasize that we may know is this. We may know that Christ loves his own which are in the world. Now, it is true. In one sense of the word, everything is his because he is the creator of all things. Without him was not anything made that was made. All things are His, from the tiniest insect upon this planet to the greatest, the highest angel in heaven. All creatures in all places, they are all His. He is the Creator. But believers are His own in a special sense. Believers are His own in a way that others are not. They are His own because they were given unto Him by the Father. Remember in John chapter 17 in His prayer, how often, I believe it is six times in that prayer, He makes mention of the fact, as many as thou hast given Him, speaking of Himself as the mediator, as many as thou, the Father, hast given unto Him. So His own are His in this special sense in in that they were given unto Him by the Father, and they are redeemed by Him with His precious blood. He redeemed His own. He bought us at the cross of Calvary. And they are His own in this sense that we are called by the Spirit of God. So having loved His own, His own by election by God the Father choosing and giving them unto the Son, His own by God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, dying in their stead, redeeming them from all iniquity, and His own by God the Holy Spirit calling and bringing them to faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. But you notice in our text that the writer here singles out his own which were in the world. 
having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Now, we might think of his own. Some of his own were already in heaven. And so these are singled out, his own which were in the world. You and I, I know him as my Lord and Savior, and you too, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ today, you are in this world, and you are one of His. And this great truth, this comforting truth, is given unto us, having loved His own, which were in the world, He loved them unto the end. Now, what might be the purpose in singling out His own, which were in the world, to emphasize that He loves His own, which are in the world? We know He loves His own, those who were given unto Him by the Father, those He redeemed, those who are called by the Spirit of God, but these are singled out, His own which were in the world. Having loved His own which were in the world, He loved them unto the end. What could possibly cause the writer to, to point this out to us? Well, I think of three reasons, three possibilities. First of all, because the Lord Jesus Christ had been with these, His own, which were in the world. They had walked with Him and communicated with Him for three years, and now He's right at the very point of leaving this world. The Scripture here says, His hour was come, His hour was come, that He should depart out of this world unto the Father. And so they would no longer have His bodily presence with them. Now it is true that He promised never to leave us, never to forsake us. And He is with us in this world by His Spirit being in us. But I think this is maybe the reason this is pointed out. Having loved His own which were in the world, He loved them unto the end. And yes, even when He would no longer be with us bodily, don't doubt don't question His love. And then secondly, His own, His own which are in the world, we are in a place of danger. When you think about His own, His own which are in heaven, and when these words were written, some of His own were already in heaven, they were out of danger. But you and I, those of us in this world, we continue in this place of danger. We still have Satan as our enemy. We still have sin and the world uh, battling against us. But don't question, don't doubt, the Lord Jesus Christ is love for His own which are in the world. And then third, His own, His own which were in the world. Sometimes we have doubts about ourselves. I can just hear someone saying today, yes, there is sin in this world, but what really concerns me, what really troubles me, is the sin that still remains in me. But hear this word today, my friends. Having loved His own which were in the world, He loved them unto the end. 